Welkom, het is Tim hier, uh, Tim Underdak. Welkom boys, uh, ik heb wederom weer een nieuw interview voor jullie. Ik heb een interview met uh, Michael uh, Lassen voor jullie. Um, Michael Lassen, of Michael Lassen, uh, hij zal straks zeggen uh, hoe je het precies goed moet zeggen, is um, iemand die ik een, een tijdje terug heb ontmoet tijdens, uh, tijdens een bootcamp in Amsterdam. Um, eigenlijk super grappig. Hij, uh, uh, hij was een, hij sprak, ik sprak op datzelfde event, uh, had, sprak ik en had ik een speech en hij had uh, vlak voor mij had hij een speech en tijdens deze speech, um, <laughs> eigenlijk ontzettend lullig, vertelde hij een aantal dingen waar ik nog nooit eerder over had gelezen, wat ik nog nooit eerder in een boek had gelezen en waarvan ik echt dacht van oké, okay, dat is mijn eigen ding, um, stond Michael uh, Lassen daar voor mij en die vertelde een verhaal wat... Um, Bijna exact hetzelfde verhaal met een aantal, aantal precies dezelfde inzichten die ik ook had gehad, um, vertelde hij vlak voor mij. Waardoor ik uh, enigszins gedwongen was uh, wat te improviseren. Um, en uh, uh, enigszins lullig, maar ik had wel zoiets van, hey, deze, deze vent is interessant. En hij, is ook echt, hij heeft zulke interessante dingen te vertellen over, over motivatie en over hoe je doelen kan stellen en over hoe je eigenlijk... Als heel mens een, een, een betere man kan worden en meer zelfvertrouwen kan hebben en lekkerder in je vel kan zitten. En hij heeft daar uh, heel veel boeiende dingen uh, over te vertellen. Ik heb zelf een aantal dingen die ik nu inmiddels um, in, in coaching gebruik, die ik uh, van hem gestolen heb. En uh, nou ja, dat, dat is wel lekker jammer. Ik zeg het nu toch in Nederland, dus hij weet het niet. Um, goed, um, hij is net getrouwd. Um, en daar, we gaan het daar even over hebben. We gaan het even hebben over doelzettingen en, en allerlei interessante dingen. Maar um, ik zal hem eerst introduceren, zodat hij het ook kan volgen. Um, Michael, welkom. Thank you very much, Tim. It's, yeah. uh, it's nice to be here. Yeah, and it's, it's really nice actually of you to, to take the time and uh, to teach us a couple of things. Well, my, my, my little secret is that, that I actually love doing this. <laughs> Um, and, and that's something I, I think is, is really important for what we're going to talk about. Uh, and also in general, that the more you love what you're doing, the, the easier it's going to be, obviously, but also the better results you're going to have, uh, both short term and long term. And, you know, I love talking about this stuff. Uh, it's, uh, it's really something that, you know, it, it's the famous thing that, that, that people ask, well, if, if you want a billion dollars, what would you do tomorrow? And I would literally be doing the same thing I'm doing tomorrow, whether I, I win this uh, billion dollars or not. So, so no problem. Uh, I love doing these things. Okay. Well, actually, it, it is also a lot of fun, isn't it, for for us guys to talk about girls and getting <laughs> with girls. I mean, that's what we do, right? Yeah. And the cool thing about uh, teaching other people is that in order to really, really master something, you have to teach it to other people. Um, so, so sometimes I joke and say, well, the reason why I'm doing all this teaching and coaching and training, you know, it's, it's not for the money, it's not for the glory. I, I'm just a selfish bastard who wants to become better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. And, and I've heard some of your stuff and it's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's great stuff. I was, I was just talking. Well, act, actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm usually thinking somewhere towards so genius or brilliant, but I can go with good stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, genius, br genius, brilliant. Well, I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I, then I think about like nuclear warfare or, or like really, really difficult stuff. And, and <laughs> getting girls is just just getting girls, and getting confidence is just getting confidence. And I mean, of course, we are like the bright minds of this century, but a lot of people won't appreciate it, I guess. But <laughs> apart from that, I was I was telling the guys about how you gave this speech uh, right before me, where you actually said some things that I thought I invented myself. Which I actually I I just found your notes in the bathroom and I just copied it. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that, I thought that was that was very interesting. Uh, you know, I I I was glad I, came, I went on before you because otherwise, you know, I would have had to change my speech. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be able to actually because you wouldn't understand it. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, actually, that would be fun, though. Yeah, people would have been wondering, what the fuck? He's saying the same thing, you know? <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> but, um, 
but also you just got married. Yeah, uh, two weeks ago I married uh, um, my well, she was my girlfriend for exactly ten years. Uh, so we got married on our ten year anniversary, which was uh, awesome because it was on a Saturday. So uh, that worked out beautifully. Well, congrats, muscle tough. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, actually, I'm just cheating out. I think it's really hard to say congratulations. It's really hard to pronounce for me for some reason, but <laughs> you, you'll get the you'll get the idea. And so yeah. I actually caught you at a great moment right now, right? Because you just got married. You're about to go on your honeymoon. And yeah. right now your your event uh, of, of your your coaching program, the Congre and Man, is, is like kicking ass, you told me before. So where Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I, I've, I've been a little bit nervous about if it was possible to transfer the results from a live seminar and getting it to... Uh, an online coaching program, but uh, so far it's been working uh, much better than I'd hoped for. So yeah, life, life's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, man, awesome. And life is probably pretty good because, well, we spoke about this earlier, you like to offer a, a lot of a lot of value, right? Uh, just like this interview, you're, you're all about, uh, about well, you, you say teaching stuff, but you're also like to offer a lot of value. I've, I've met you. You are actually a very humble guy, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in one sense, uh, I, I don't make no mistake about uh, what I can do. Um, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm very conscious of the fact that some stuff I do is, is uh, I'm, I'm one of the best at in the world. But at the same time, I'm very, very humble about it. And I don't take it for granted. So, for example, when, when I tell about some of my you know, crazy success stories, it's not something that every time I see a new client that I just expect to be able to cure everything in, in five minutes or an hour or two hours. I'm still very humble about that it's even possible to do some of these things. Uh, and I think that's uh, when, when you become really good at something or if you have a gift or if you, you train yourself to, to have a gift at something, I think that's, that's the best way of, of, the, of, of dealing with it is that you have this... You're humble about it, uh, but at the same time, you are, are very, very clear about what you're actually capable of. I think that combination, at least for me, is working very well. Uh, I would be afraid to, you know, I, I don't want to end up like some egomaniac guru who's just like, oh, I'm the best in the world and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, for me, having that humbleness is, is very, very important. And also, one thing I just thought about that you mentioned thing about giving value. Well, first of all, that, that's that's what I teach guys is that that realizing how much value you can contribute to another person, whether it's a girl or whether it's a guy or, or whatever the context is, that, that's, a, that's a really nice way of, of starting an interaction, or as, as I like to call it, a potential new adventure, is that you have that mindset of, of knowing how much you can provide a value uh, to other persons and, and being willing to do that first before asking for anything in return. And that works well in business, it works extremely well in networking, and it works also <laughs> very well when it comes to, to creating relationships, whether they're being romantic or friendships, etc. And it, it's also something I'm, I'm thinking about in terms of, of leadership, is that, which is a quality that women find extremely attractive. And for me, the, the most important thing about leadership is the ability to go first. That, for example, have, have you seen the movie with, uh, with Mel Gibson, Braveheart? Well, actually, I haven't. Everybody keeps telling me I should. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, go download it, uh, you know, tonight. Well, but that, that's just one example of of a true leader who's who's willing to go first, and uh, and and that's also it, it, in communication. That if you, if you want uh, a girl to be uh, attracted or to be um, uh, engaged or whatever, you have to be it first. Otherwise, it's very very difficult uh, to get her into it. Uh, so it, that, there's a lot of of, uh, of value in having that mindset of of being willing to go first and and having the what I call the the value mindset of of how can I provide value. Well, yeah, I, I actually I actually I can, I completely agree with you on that part, right? You, because if if you want somebody to to think of you as as somebody who's valuable, you should. Give this person some value, and if you want somebody somebody to be nice to you, you should be nice to this person. So it's actually it's very true, but it's it's also very much a forgotten skill, I guess. Uh, just yeah, I agree. just giving away freely, actually. 
Well, yeah, and, and that's what I see sort of also on a general basis in society that, that I, I see so much of, of the mindset of, of gimme, 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 gimme. You know, what, what can I get out of this? What, you know, what society is supposed to give me this and, and, and things like that. And, and that's just, uh, it, it's so much, uh, probably the biggest thing you can learn in, in this life is self-responsibility, is that, that you take responsibility for your own actions, for your own communication, um, and, and don't expect uh, other people to, uh, to, to, to just give, 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 but think about, you know, it's the old, was it, uh, was it Kennedy who said, you know, don't ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Um, not necessarily agreeing with that particular statement, but the mindset behind it is, is very, very important. That whole taking self-responsibility for your actions, for your mindsets, for, for getting your goals yeah. is super important. And, uh, and also because, because the, on, on the other hand is that one of the most dangerous mindsets you can ever have is, is the I'm a victim uh, mindset. Because once you're in that, you know, it's going to be very, very tough. And, and you know me as a very positive guy, but if someone is, is stuck in the victim mentality, oh, shit, I mean, that's, that's really bad. Uh, that's a very <laughs> bad place to be in. Well, actually, well, what you're, what you're just saying, right? I mean, the people listening to this are are a lot of, of guys and, and men um, for, from all ages, but they have all one thing in common. I mean, they want to get girls. And yeah. Sometimes it's it's very hard for me to to convey the message that if you want to get girls, you have to become actually a better person and you have to develop yourself in, in all areas and not only like what do I say to this girl um, how but so can you relate this a little bit like from from your perspective what should you change as, as a man to become a more confident person right you call it the, the congruent man right the man who's who's completely cool with himself let's keep it simple yeah, I mean that that that's a, a good uh, part of the definition for sure. Um, what, one of the biggest distinctions uh, I make between what I do and and what is normally teached uh, in in the pickup community is that the way I see it is that what what ninety ninety five maybe even ninety nine percent of the community teaches is what I call a tactical mindset, which is based about what what are you supposed to do and what are you supposed to say when you're in interaction. Um, and really, that's what creates a lot of the problems, because if, if that's all you have, the tactical mindset, then you, you, you just you don't think about who it is that, that you are as a person. And, and that's also what I see as, as a big challenge, is that even when, when guys uh, get results from learning the tactical mindsets, whether it's uh, opening or a different uh, way of, of closing, number closing, case closing, etc., etc. And what I've noticed after working with this for four or five years is that guys who are getting results, um, they're, they're still frustrated. And, and what I've realized actually this year is that the reason why that some of those are still frustrated is because if you train yourself and, and your unconscious mind to associate your results with something that you do instead of who you are, you're just creating a, a gap of frustration because the results are associated with, with things. It's just because of what you said, what you did. It's not about who you are. And what, what we are are so much more important than what we do. For example, like, for example, if um, one of the things that I'm going to say to my daughter, who's uh, soon going to be one year old, is that when she gets old enough and, and she's going to start doing things she's not supposed to, and and, she, and and if if the situation comes up where she says, oh, you know, I'm I'm so sorry I I, I did that. I, I hope you still love me. What I'm going to say to her is that you know what? There's nothing you can do that will not make me love you because I love you for who you are and not what you do. And that's so important to realize that the identity, who we are, is the most important thing we can work on because when we work on that, then all the other things automatically become influenced. You know, if, if we feel on an identity level that we are worthy and we deserve results, we deserve the best in life, then that's going to influence our behavior. But we can learn all day long things about how to change our behaviors, but it's not necessarily going to influence our identity level, our values, our beliefs. So that's why I see uh, that the community has, has got this a, a little bit 
uh, wrong, at least the, the, um, the, the way of doing things, that it's much more important to, to work on, on becoming your best self possible, or like I call it, becoming congruent, which is also becoming congruent with what you want. And then afterwards, it becomes so much easier, the tactical stuff, you know, how to start a conversation and how to close and, and all these things become so much easier. And that's the feedback I was so happy to get from the seminars I did uh, last year and the year before is that there's a lot of guys who were frustrated, uh, who had studied pickup for many years. And after the workshop, a lot of them said that, wow, after the workshop, it just they just realized which part of, of what they learned felt natural and congruent for them. And then the results just skyrocketed after that. And I was extremely happy <laughs> because one, and like you talked about, who we are is, is so much more important than what we do. Uh, it, it's on two completely different levels. Does that make sense? It's, it actually it absolutely does make sense. It's like when, when I tell you a joke and you, you tell the joke to somebody else and somebody would laugh, you're like, well, that's a great joke. Where if you would have come up with the joke yourself, you, you would have feel like, well, hey, I'm funny. Um, yeah, that's that's a good, that's a great example actually. That's yeah. that's really good example. <laughs> well, steal it. I've so I've stolen more from you for so steal. It. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and also the the other thing that that uh, uh, that, that came to mind when when you you said the thing about um, a guy's frustrations earlier is that you also really want to be careful about that. And that's what I see from from a lot of guys is that the results that they're going after uh, with women, that if if that's ultimately about filling up a void that's inside of them, then, oh my God, you know, they're setting themselves up for failure and frustration. Because if, if you have a some type of emotional void or emotional uh, issues or problems, constraints, and, and you're putting that responsibility over into a relationship or into a girl, you're really setting yourself up for failure big time. You need to fix that first yourself because then you can create the type of relationship that's that's mind blowing, that's fantastic. And and that's the one of the things uh, the best things I think about this whole pickup industry started is that it, it has made guys it had given guys hope first of all and also made them realize that it's it's not necessary to settle for less. Um Unfortunately, that's what a lot of guys end up because of, of the frustration that, that they end up with anyway. But but the the importance of, of taking self responsibility and not being willing to settle for less that's that's huge. Um, and I think that's 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 probably one of the biggest takeaways we we can give guys is that refusing to settle and refusing to give up because it is possible to get the results that you want, um, and then taking self responsibility. Um, those are two huge, 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 huge things. And and you mean not? You say like the don't settle for less and take the responsibility, and you will get it if you decide that you are going to to, to get it if you if you really make this decision and hold yourself accountable for that. But yeah, or even better, have other people hold you accountable too. Um, I mean, that's a whole another discussion, but that that can also be very important. Having whether it's a coach or an accountability partner, uh, but someone who's going to keep you accountable on the day-to-day -day actions uh, that is needed in order to uh, to uh, to you know the the bigger the goals that you set, the, the more important is that you keep your daily focus on well, what's the next action step I need to pursue. And um, and take action towards, and th that was one of the things that you mentioned yeah, that, actually, that you personally got out of my speech, right? Yeah, actually, that, that's that's just what I laughed about it because um, the la what, what you you were telling the other day. I, I hope you can 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 tell it can tell it again because you can probably tell it better than I can. But what it what it came down to. And for, for me, this was uh, this was actually like, well, hey, that's actually that's a great concept, um, because when you you have this goal and you want to pursue this goal, it's it's easy to get distracted or or get like uh, put down if if you put a lot of effort in, but you are not seeing 
immediate results. Uh, so yeah, that, that's definitely one of the, the, the dangers. Things, but how do you do that over a longer period? How, how does this work? Well, the, the most important thing is that, that I think is that, that you make a decision that you want to, to have success. You know, then the next step is, is to define what is success for you. What, what type of goals do you want? Uh, and, and one thing that, that uh, I see a lot of guys have a little bit of an issue with is that, that they're afraid that, well, if they set this goal, then they, they are sort of committed to that and it can never be changed. Um, and I see a lot of guys having a little bit of, of, of issues with this, realizing that, yeah, well, on a long-term plan, probably what they want is, is a steady relationship, getting married. But, hey, they would kind of like some fun adventures on the way, too. So the important thing to realize is that it's, it's more important to have a goal than to have the right goal. Um, it's sort of like one of the, the, the best and most interesting business concepts uh, right now is, uh, is something uh, that, that's a great book called uh, Getting to Plan B which means is that if, if you take the most successful businesses uh, out there in the world, very, very few of them actually manage to succeed with their first business plan, their plan A. Um, and that's everyone from eBay to Google, um, et cetera, is that they started out with a plan and ended up with something else because after they started implementing, taking action, they noticed what was working and they noticed that some things weren't uh, working, some things were, and then they course corrected themselves to where they wanted to go. So it's, it's, it is important that you set a big goal, but you also have to realize is that you are allowed to change it along the way if you discover something different. So again, the most important thing is that you have a big goal, something that's motivating, something that, 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 that really drives you, you know, that's, that you're passionate about. That's probably the, the most important productivity secret in the world is that you're passionate about what you're going to do. Uh, because once you're passionate about something, then, I mean, you, you're just going to do it because you have this passion. Um, and then, like we talked about earlier, then the trick sometimes become, is that you have this big goal and, and maybe you can see it out in the future and you believe you can get there. But then if you focus on the gap between where you are right now and where you want to go, that can be too much uh, because it, it will very likely be a huge gap. So what you need to do is that you need to figure out what is the next step that I need to do in order to get to where you want to go. So, so one of the, the exercises I'm just going to mention briefly that I take people through, whether it's anything to do with inner game or game or it's uh, if I work with businesses or uh, sometimes I also work a lot with professional poker players, is that we go into the future and imagine what it's going to be like. And then we look back and say, well, what are the steps I need to do in order to get here, having achieved this goal? And what's the first thing I had to do? Because then when you have this first thing, the first action step you need to focus on, then it makes sense because then you can have the motivation of the big goal and you can have the focus on the next step you're going to do. And then as you take that next step, then you need to be open to the feedback. You know, that was also one of the things I shared at, at, the, at the conference is that, and one of the things I, I came up with for the first time while I was doing uh, sessions with, uh, with guys who were into a pickup is that I said, well, realize that when you start a conversation uh, with a girl, or as I like to call it, start a potential new adventure, only three positive things can come out of it. Either you get your goal whether that is getting her number or kiss her or bring her home that night. And if you get that goal, that's, that's great, obviously. Then the second cool thing that can happen is that you don't get your goal, but you have the potential of learning something important. And not just something that's important, but something that could be crucial for ultimately getting to where you want to go. So that's having those learning experiences are absolutely essential. And then the third thing that can happen that's important is that... To, to, to actually define failure. Just having a great learning experience. It's actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a bad word to use failure. It's, it's much better, like you said, to use learning experiences. Um, because uh, then you put it, you, you put it into a box that's positive. Um, and then the third uh, thing that can happen that's positive is that, well, you don't get your goal. You, you realize that that's, there's nothing you could learn from it. Um, but then you get the chance to practice maybe the number one most important quality you can have, which is to keep your focus. And what's so genius about thinking about it like that is that then you know every time that you are going to start a conversation 
interaction with a girl, only three things can happen, and you have the control of it. That either you get what you want, you find out something you need to learn, or you practice your focus. And that thing alone, I've seen guys uh, eliminate their uh, approach anxiety, so to speak, because they realize that, oh, wait a minute, you know, every time I start, every time I take an action step, I have the control of making it into something that will benefit me long term. And that makes a huge difference. And, and that, that's the power of, of, of taking first steps. And then, then as you take in that first step, and you, then either you realize, hey, I'm on the right direction, or you realize, hey, there's something I need to improve, or you, you realize that, hey, I'm a, I, I need to keep my focus and continue. And one example I like to use is that um, is, uh, is, is all the famous stand-up comedians like Chris Rock or Jerry Seinfeld. You know, it's, it's interesting how they prepare for a big show is that um, none of them just, if, if, for example, if they know they have to have the start of their new tour or big HBO special in, in three months from now, none of them just sit down and go, okay, I have three months to write a show and, okay, I come up with this joke, ha, ha, that's very funny and this joke is pretty cool and then they write the whole show. No, that's not how they do it. They, they come up with some ideas and they go down to the local comedy club and they test it out and they get the feedback. And then they go back and they rewrite, they go back to the local comedy club again and they get more feedback. And then after they've done that a number of times, then they have the show and then they're ready to go out and have huge successes. But they would never have been able to do it just in one go. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's a very useful, uh, useful example um, because it's, it's about taking the small steps along the way and getting the feedback. Um. And and how can can you put this into an example? Say for for example, I am. Uh, well, let's let's keep the subject at hand. Let, uh, I want to have uh, the, a beautiful girlfriend uh, that I love, and um, I want to have a great life with her. I want to uh, get married with her and have kids with her, and it's somebody. My parents would like, and my friends would like, like this, this, this huge big girl, but right now I'm, I'm sitting at home, depressed, listening to Michael Lawson tell me I should be a better person. <laughs> well, first of all, you should find out your credit card and go to this web, you know. <laughs> Actually, well, the, the most important thing is that you, you, you need to find out if, if, if you're congruent with that goal, if you, first of all, believe it's possible, if it's, if it's something that that's really resonates with you and it's not something that you feel you should, well, I've read all these books, I should be able to have, uh, you know, 10 fuck buddies and blah, 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 blah. You know, it has to be something that's important to you. Um, and we'll get back to that part uh, uh, later. Um, so first of all, presupposing that, that this is the right goal for you to work on, then you need to figure out, uh, and there are different ways of doing it. I have my method of doing it, but what's the first step I can do uh, or you can ask the question, if I knew what the first step I had to do in order to get there, what would that be? You know, I like to do a, a little more complicated drill where I take people into the future, imagining what it's like, um, and then looking back, and, and I ask them, so what was the first thing you did after having this session or after having been in this uh, workshop with Michael that you did in order to get here? Um, and then you figure out what that action step is, and then you then it becomes really difficult because then you have to go do it <laughs> uh, and then you need to be open to the feedback of if does that get me closer to where I wanted to go or is there something I need to learn is there something I need to improve etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean that, that's the short explanation usually I, I spend uh, a couple of hours just explaining this process at a seminar but this is the sort of uh, shortcut version well that's it's actually it, it is it is it's, it's it's, it's, for me, it is very clear. Let's let's put it like that. Uh, and then it, it, it's so important realizing that when you take that step, that you can you have the control again, the self responsibility of making it into one of three uh, things you can turn into a victory. And now let's let's look at at, at, at you as a as a person. You are you are a coach. You you run a program. You just got married and everything. You you actually achieved a lot of goals. So you are, are you living 
the life you are teaching others to live, right? Do you live what you teach? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what's uh, so important for me. And, and that's why I use this word congruent man and why I told about earlier that that I want to demonstrate what I'm teaching with the thing about giving value first before asking anything back. Because obviously the congruent man program costs money. You know, maybe I actually I, I don't even think I would make it free if I won that billion dollars we talked about, because that's another thing that that you have to be a little bit careful of. And, and, and that's a mistake I see a lot of guys in the community make is that that they're not willing to invest in themselves um, and and. Unfortunately, you can say, or some would say this, it's not that unfortunate, but the thing that we put value on um, and, and, and we have strived for, whether it's through effort or energy or time or money, is what will put the most value on consciously and especially unconsciously. So, you know, it, it's no secret that there's a lot of free material out there. Um, but again, what that is, that's a lot of material on the tactical mindset. Um, and if you only have that uh, as, as uh, if, if all you do is looking for resources out there, you're forgetting that the num or maybe the number one most important thing of becoming successful is that you focus on your own resourcefulness instead of, of different resources. Because if you're resourceful yourself, then you'll always find resources. Uh, you know, there was this, I've, I've actually never seen this TV show, but I've heard a lot about a TV show called MacGyver in the U.S. And it, it's this guy who can, he can literally have a, a, a bottle of soda and a string wire and a paper clip and he can build a bomb. <laughs> and he's never, he never has any resources, but he's resourceful. So he always comes up with something uh, that, will, uh, that will get him to where he wants to go. Does um, that make sense? It, yeah, actually, actually it does. It's uh, it's it's Anthony Robbins, uh, right? Uh, don't claim to uh, missing resources, but the, the what? Sorry, resourcefulness. Yeah, it it resourcefulness will always conquer having all the resources in the world. Um, uh, so so yeah, back to your question. Uh, yeah, I mean, at, I think it was one or two years ago. I found one of my old. Um, one of my old uh, goal setting uh, lists that I've made. And, uh, and I, I think it was something like 13 out of 15, I've achieved those. Uh, so, you know, that, that, was, that was pretty awesome. I think number 14 was meeting Michael Jackson. So that's gonna be a little difficult. <laughs> but, but I did win his autograph in a competition, making a huge fool out of myself. So <laughs> well, at least I got that part. <laughs> well, you got actually, <laughs> Much closer than most of uh, the people, I guess. <laughs> oh, actually, well, let, let me just tell that story because that's that's also illustrative of, of something we talked about. Is that yeah. what happened in that competition? Is that you know I I've always been a huge Michael Jackson fan, and I I used to have a huge huge fear of singing, uh, especially singing in public. Um, and then what happened is that there was a, a competition in the local radio where you had to call in and you had to translate a Michael Jackson song into Danish and sing it in the radio in front of half of a million people. So I thought, well, cool, I get my sister to do it. So I just translate the song and get her to do it because I really, really wanted to win that autograph. And there was a bunch of other st stuff you would win. And uh, I, I translated and then I went in to wake her up and, and I couldn't wake her up. And, you know, time was running out. So I had to call in myself. And I had to sing in the radio. So on the one hand, I had this huge fear, almost bordering on, an, on a phobia. <laughs> but I had something that I really, really fucking wanted. <laughs> and then that override the fear, and I just did it anyway. Um, and, and that's what's important is that when you get to a point where what you're working on, you, the goal that you're working towards is so important, that gives you so much power. Um, that sometimes it can actually override uh, big fears or big phobias. So for me as a teacher, that's a great story to have because I had the experience. So when I teach it to other people, I can do it in a way that's congruent because I have done it myself. So I actually love that you asked me that question because I think you're the first one who ever asked me that question that, hey, Michael, is, is you know, you have these skills. Are you living the, the life of, of your dreams? And uh, of course, I still have goals I'm working towards, but... I am really happy with where I am. Um, and that's also a, a, an important thing is that you recognize yourself for what you have done already. And there's always going to be things that, well, you, you're going to want more and because we need to. 
and realizing what you've already have accomplished and giving yourself credit for that and, and actually looking for you. And that's one of the big things I do with clients and in seminars is, is look throughout our history and picking out all the good things that we have done and then sort of enhance those things, realizing how much resources we already have um, and then also letting go of all the, the, the bad shit that we've done, we've experienced it, and even to a certain extent, turning that into something that empowers us, which is, is something that sometimes is, is ridiculous what happens when you turn something that has been holding people back and you turn it into something that is going to drive them forward. Oh my God, that, that was actually what I was thinking about when I told you earlier the thing about feeling humble, that every time that happens, I just go, Jesus, I can't believe this this works so well <laughs> yeah it's it's it is actually great because it's when you when you look at a, a lot of this 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 stuff you you are telling it's it's not it's not only it's true but it's it's also kind of of, of uh, so obvious true that you sometimes realize how how much distractions we get right we get it's so easy to get distracted, to, to, to lose focus because of something that's on the TV or you, know, you could be like saving up money for, for years to buy to buy a new car and then all of a sudden try to spend it on a vacation or, or something like that. Um, mm. And it's, 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 very, it's very easy to get, to get distracted from from the point, from the point where you make a goal and then you you achieve one, and and that one of the things that's also a, you know talking about society is that unfortunately and, and much more so here in Europe than, than in the United States, uh, the thing about that and and that's also what I you know I've suffered from this myself and I see with a lot of guys is that on an unconscious level they don't feel safe becoming successful because you know what are their friends going to say what are their family going to say, what are people around them going to say? Because it's much more so in, in Europe, it's not always that successful people are, are looked up to and, and appreciated and recognized for what they've done. You know, For example, you know, if, if let's say you're, you're working somewhere or, or you're going to school and if, if you come uh, and, and Monday morning you tell about, oh, I had this amazing weekend and I just got laid like crazy and we had this huge party and no, it's, it's the fewest of your friends or co-workers who are going to say, wow, I'm so happy for you. Tell me more. About how did you do it? I, I'm, in, I'm inspired of you. you know, I, how did you do it? I want to learn more. Where did you learn? <laughs> People are usually going to react negative somehow. So there's this unconscious filter a lot of times that it's not safe to become successful because you're going to get negative reactions. And, well, unfortunately, I cannot change that for you, you know. <laughs> That that's just what gonna gonna happen, unfortunately. So you have to so brace yourself for that and and figure out how are you gonna respond to that. Uh, and and what I say to guys is that well, then you're gonna figure out who are your who are your real true long term friends or people that's gonna support you, because unfortunately, and that's also why one of the things I talk a lot about is is the power of having people around you who are positive and and and. In the ideal world, you have a mastermind group around you with people who are supporting you all the way, who are rooting for you, who are, you know, want to give you feedback, etc. cetera. Um, because if you only have negative people around you, it's, it's going to be 10 times more difficult uh, achieving your goals than if you have people around you who are supporting you. Well, when, when, when you say that about actually... Um, you are speaking right now about your peers and stuff, but just the, just to, to round this all up. If if I want to get more, if I want to get more confident, if I want to feel better, if I want to uh, be more focused, um, what are steps? Uh, what are the, the smallest steps we can take right now to to get that? It's it's figuring out a goal, uh, but do you have like like books or exercises or, or small steps, really stuff. If someone well, is right now, he can say, well, I can start doing this right now and it will help me. Yeah, well, I, I would add in a, another thing first is that you have to be willing to let go of your excuses. And 
I would say 99.9% .9 of all excuses are simply lies. They're, they're not true. They're just excuses. So you have to be willing to let go of them. So the other thing that, that, that when you ask that question, they don't know, yeah, I can give a, I can give a book, I can give an exercise, but I wanted to do something that, that's more spectacular than that because yes, I, I want to help people along the way as, as best as I can. And what I want to do is that, uh, I'm going to be willing to give out some free coaching sessions, uh, myself. Um, and let's say I'm, I'm going to do it personally to the first five people who get in touch with me. And the rest then is going to be uh, uh, one of the guys from my coaching group. And what we will do is that we will spend an hour with you and we will work on your goals. We will help you figuring out if you're congruent with your goals and help you figure out, is this what I truly want and why is it that you want it? And also, on the other hand, what is it that you don't want anymore? What is it that, that will give you the, the other kind of drive that where you go, fuck it, I don't want to have this in my life anymore. So you're clear on that. Um, and then ultimately figure out what's the next action step that you're going to take. So I, I thought that, first of all, that's a, a way for me to demonstrate my congruency with offering value first. And the other thing that the, that, uh, the reason why I want to do it is that, you know, for me, I'm on a quest here. <laughs> I, I want to figure out what's the fastest way we can help guys achieving what it is that they want with relationships and life. And... I'm still on, on the part where I'm figuring out what, what is it that keeps most guys, uh, what, what is it that keeps them from those results? What, what unconscious uh, fears do they have? What excuses do they have, et cetera? So for me to do it personally is, is still worth my time, even though I do it for free, because I learn something new. Um, so so that's, that's sort of the, uh, the, the, the great thing for me is that I get a lot of feedback and I help guys maybe a couple of steps towards uh, their goals. So I would much rather do it uh, this way. And, uh, and that way, you know, people don't, don't have an excuse that, oh, I, you know, I can't find that book on Amazon, you know, and, <laughs> and, and I don't have time to do that exercise or I didn't understand the instructions. You know, all you have to do is, is, is write to me and, and you're going to put out the, the email, which is congruentman at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Facebook, Michael Lassen. Uh, and uh, either myself or one of the guys from my coaching group will help you do exactly what we just talked about. So that's just awesome. So basically what you're saying is anybody who wants to, listening to this, this tape right now, can get a free one-hour coaching session with you. Yeah, exactly. And what would you normally charge for something like that? Just well, when I so when I work with the uh, they're getting because I I know what I'm, I'm seriously I, I I will book the first coaching session session man, I, seriously. But what? Well, and and actually I will I will uh, give you a huge compliment on that because if if you knew how many. Uh, guys, I've, I've talked about this, uh, who are coaches themselves, who just go, oh, that, that's great, you know, that's wonderful. You're actually the first one who goes, hey, I want this too. Um, and that's great, you know, that's, a, that's, a, for me, that's a sign of a, of a true master is something who's, someone who's willing to put their ego aside and go, hey, I want to learn more because it's more important for me to learn than to take care of my ego. Uh, so huge compliment to you on that. Uh, smart choice. <laughs> Well, I, I sure, I sure hope so. And I'm, I'm, of, of course, I believe everybody has, can teach, can teach anybody something. I mean, even from a homeless guy on the streets, you can learn something. I mean, I, I could literally write a book on the things I've learned from my daughter so far. <laughs> and she's only one year old. I and mean, granted, you know, she's not told me those lessons, but the things it, it started in my mind, uh, and, and the realizations is, is just amazing. So, and, and that's, that's a huge mindset key as well is that be open for, for what type of, of resources that you have access to, you know. Yeah, Google is a great resource uh, for for information, but so can a, a, a small child be, such can a, a good friend. And and sometimes how you can learn from from uh, from things or people around you is that you can go. And I've had this experience, unfortunately, with a lot of friends. Go, shit! What the fuck is he doing with with his life? I mean, damn fuck! I'm not gonna do that, you know. And then that connection to what it is that you want is 
is that. And for example, you know, I, I go to seminars all the time. I buy courses and a lot of times I go, Jesus, fuck, why did I go to this incredibly boring speech? But then I turn it into something positive and go, well, if I had to do this better, if there was something I could fix with that, uh, you know, what would that be? And then I turn it into something positive uh, anyway. Well, I know because what I, I, that, that would be, I had that experience. I, I remember it very vividly. I was at, a, at, a, at, a, at someone's speech and I went, oh, fuck, I'm just wasting my time. And then I called myself, going, wait a minute, that, that's an excuse, you know, and most excuses are lies. So I went, well, if I could get something positive out of this speech, what would it be? And I went, well, how would I do that speech? And I came, I'd started drawing a mind map and came up with some great ideas. And uh, so even though the speech wasn't very good, you know, I took self-responsibility and came up with, uh, with uh, something positive from the speech. Well, and that's actually, actually much more healthy than it is to keep on, on bashing or, or at, at anything, actually, because there are a lot of, places you are going to be in life where you are not getting what you expected or or, or where you are just you just, maybe you just don't even want to be there but you yeah. have to be there right? and those yeah, that's family parties high school reunion no <laughs> <laughs> that's watch out my girl no my wife can't hear what i'm saying now <laughs> well but but still and it are actually good examples of <laughs> stuff you have to do but you can still make make worthwhile if you see this as an experience to learn or maybe to to come up with with new ideas and you will always get them from being in a place where you wouldn't normally be or it's it's not always the easy road that will get you the most results and no, it's, it's actually the other way around oftentimes, you know, that, and that's why you know, I think it's 93% of all uh, multimillionaires, uh, they went broke at some time in their life. <laughs> um, and, and oftentimes, you know, what, what is characteristic of successful businesses and successful entrepreneurs is that, that what they learned from those quote unquote mistakes or failures, that they took those learnings and applied it in their next uh, businesses. Uh, or the next projects that they were doing, uh, and that's also you know that's a huge part of what I do with with congruent man and and in general is that going through your negative experiences and turn them into something that's positive, figuring out what could you learn from that, and make the decision that fuck it, I've learned this lesson and realize how that potentially can change your life, so you have something positive to to think about instead of the old shit that actually happened. You know that that was like the. 15 second version of a 30 minute drill, but <laughs> uh, it, the, the, the basis is that that usually you can always get something positive uh, from a negative experience. And even if you can't, just uh, refusing to let it stop you, then you have reinforced uh, what it is that, that you want, who you are as a person, and then it's something positive anyway. Well, let's, uh, let's end it on that note, Michael. Uh, again, I want to thank you for 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 just just giving away so much and then sharing this with you. And um, you are going to give me uh, the contact details I, I'll put down. It's like congruentmanandgmail.com, right? Yeah, our people can find me on Facebook at Michael Lesson. Okay. And they can they can get a free session with you, right? Yep. Uh, oh yeah. You, you oh. asked. Uh, I forgot to mention what I usually charge. And and when it's something to do with business, I charge four hundred dollars an hour. And when it's private sessions, uh, I often give deals that it's half price. So it, it's at least two hundred dollars that uh, people save this way. Oh well, I am going to make my list very happy with you. I'm I'm pretty sure, and I'm sure they are in good hands with you. And for now. Um, do you have anything you want to share with us? Anything you want to put in? Because this yeah, is a lot. Two things. <laughs> uh, first of all, well, the, the cool thing about doing it this way is that I know that uh, the guys I'm going to talk with is guys who take action because they listened all the way through this interview. And, and I love helping people who take action. I love helping people who are ambitious and, and wants to do stuff because that's one of the things that gives me the most satisfaction is, is seeing people change their lives with what I teach them. And then the second thing is that 
that one of the key phrases for me about this whole thing is that you're proud of, of who you are. You're proud of where you're going and, and you're proud of what you do. And, and yeah, you're going to fuck up. And so what? You know, just do it, learn from it and move on. Um, and, and that's ultimately also one of the most attractive qualities uh, a man can have is that he's proud of who he, are, who, who he am as a person. And he's not afraid to make mistakes. Well, um, guys listening, uh, do this. Um, I'm going to switch to Dutch to, to wrap up this interview. All right. I want to thank nice talking to you. So I can speak uh, my normal language again, uh, because actually I'm much better at that. Um, jongens, um, ik hoop dat jullie goed opgelet hebben en geluisterd. Um, dit was... Uh, dit was uh, Michael uh, Lassen, hij heeft uh, de tijd genomen voor het interview, het is serieus, dus te gekke gast. En uh, echt, je bent echt een debiel als je niet ingaat op dit aanbod. I'm just telling them they're morons if they don't go with your offer. <laughs> uh, but in Dutch. I, I, I would call them bad shit crazy, but yeah, morons is probably more. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, bad shit crazy is just as good as what I said. Michael, thank you, we're wrapping this up. Uh, thank you too. Have a nice day. Talk. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.